Hi everyone, thank you so much for your time. So I am live. <laughs> All right, so we are going to start today's edition of the Restorative Brand Agency. And we are, we are just about to go live. So welcome to the Instagram Marathon. And thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you can all see my screen and um, we're starting early. It's 7 p.m. It's 7 p.m. It's been a couple of weekdays since I spoke to you. I think I spoke to you last on Tuesday. That was the last time I was live. Although during judges session, I was live a little bit. I'm just going to put my phone on silent so that no message comes in again. As I was saying, um, so we are starting of our continuing from where we stopped last time, which is on competition analysis. And basically what we talked about last time, we're looking at how to create for your brands. We looked at your audience, understanding your audience and how, when we understand your audience, it's a lot easier for you to create. But in addition to understanding your audience, we talked about understanding your competition. So today's conversation is basically on competition analysis. If you are live and you can hear me, let me know. I will say, hey, I think we need to start giving presents to the first person to join the live session. And today's prize goes to Wilson. <laughs> okay, Susan gets the second prize. Tell me what the prize should be. Okay, how is the audio? Can you hear me clearly? How is the audio today? Let me know if the audio is perfect so I don't have to go on Instagram, I mean on Facebook to check in myself. So let me know how the audio is. Okay, let me know how the audio is. How is the audio? Fantastic. Uh, I know that you can see my screen, but I'm not sure of the audio yet. Okay, no one is responding yet. So let me go check myself to see how the audio sounds. Wilson and Susan, please let me know how the audio sounds. I'm hoping it's perfect and you can all hear me properly. Oh, something went wrong. <laughs> Please let me know if the audio is good. I'm leaning in front of my mic because you know I've got a very loud voice. I'm leaning in front of my mic. Let me know if the audio is good and we will get started. It's clear. Awesome, Tyra. Welcome. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for joining me today. The audio is perfect. Thank you so much for joining me today. As usual, I will introduce myself. My name is DK Jonah and we are running the Instagram Marathon. Now, with the past couple of days, we've looked at various areas of social media. We've not even mentioned Instagram once. And on Monday, we start the Instagram part of this whole journey. That's why I said, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Take your time. Hello, Jumbo Care. Hello, Tare. Hello, Wilson. Hi, Susan. Welcome on board. Fantastic. All right. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to look at creating content for your brand by analyzing and understanding your competition first. So competition analysis is about deciding who your competition is and then determining what you can do to make them different. So we're like, hi, Oyinda, welcome. Hi, Ola Jumake and Oyinda, I've read you people's papers. You guys did well. So we're not looking at our competition so we can copy them. No, we're looking at our competition for a couple of reasons. Number one, you want to know what the industry standard is. You want, but two, you want to know what to expect out there. Number three, you want to know what your audience are paying attention to. Number four, you just want to know what others are doing. So you know if you need to improve or you need to, in fact, every time you should always improve. We are not observing to copy. And this is something I always say during DIY branding with DK Jonah. You are not observing to copy. No, 
you are observing to transform your brand, connect with your audience and build a better strategy for yourself. So this is your research period. Everybody wear your research ads, put research in the, uh, in the comment section if you are ready to do your research and we will see how this can be done. Okay. Awesome. So who is your competition? Before you know who your competition is, you have to know yourself. So we're going to start with, with like I said, today's discussion will give you strategies to improve your marketing. It will help you build your positioning message. It will help you develop your competitive strategy. And I'll be explaining why this matters. For ministries and churches, I will say when we are doing competition analysis, you are looking at inspiration analysis instead. What are the ministries that you like their websites? You are not looking at it to say, oh, they are better than us. But when someone is doing something great, we can appreciate the work they've done and learn from them. It's like you see someone's picture, the person's picture looks good. You don't bow your head down and just start smiling and you're looking behind the way I'm looking down. Or rather, you're looking to observe and to learn. So everyone is going to be an amazing observer and I'll be telling you what you should be observing. Now, how well do you know your competition? And I would like you to answer in the comments sec section. So if you represent a brand and you know your competition, how do you compare to your competitors and how are you different from your biggest competitor? So um, I think a couple of people, I know their brands already. So I will say someone like um, John, if you can tell us the brand, the company or the industry you represent and a competition to your clients, that would be great. They will be able to see what type of competition that person is, what category we are going to classify that person into, and then bring out the best results for your brand. So how many people have a full understanding of their brands? If you have a full understanding of your brand, uh, I want you to write brand complete or brand in progress if you have a good understanding of your brand you say brand complete if you don't have a good understanding of your brand and you're just building the brand write brand in progress if you're working for someone just write brand representative or brand rep so there are three hashtags brand complete that means you're working for your own brand brand in progress you have a brand but it's still not crystal clear what you want to do and brand rep is if you are representing someone. The reason I'm asking for these three feedbacks is I want to understand. Oh, we can't see your screen anymore. Fantastic. Why is that? Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen now? Susan said people couldn't see my screen before. Okay, brand in progress, brand in progress, fantastic. But well, can you see my screen? Susan, please let me know if you can see the screen. Okay, fantastic. Brand complete. Yay. So we have one brand complete. Clearly awesome. Brand rep. We have brand reps here. Church brand, brand rep, and business brand, brand in progress. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We love seeing that. So we have people representing brands. We have people that are building their brands. And we have people that are brand in progress and already have complete brands. Now, for these questions you've asked, do you know who your competition is and how are you different from your biggest competition? That's a question you can answer in the comments. Okay, fantastic. John, thank you. John says he can see my comments. Um, 
that's a question you can answer in the comments but it's a question i would like you to answer by the end of today when we are through with this because we'll be looking at the different types of competition that you have and we'll be looking at how we well you can represent the brand that you're representing so the truth is when people hear competition they believe it's something someone you are fighting with they see it as a rival as someone that you are in opposition with and you must always win the truth is every brand is different and there is room for everybody on earth just think about it when birds are flying in the air you don't really hear of birds coming to a meeting when they are flying it shows that there is the world is big enough for every brand you and i can offer similar or the same services but we can make ourselves stand out and appeal by appealing to our own specific audience so for example i appeal to certain type of people and this afternoon on the co-working session we had another brand tech person on on board he appeals to different types of people but there are certain projects we can collaborate on if we are not able to understand ourselves clearly we won't see where we are able to stand out so when you're looking at other brands this is what i know i want you to be looking at and you will understand this as we go forward because as usual i will use examples by sharing my screen on going to some websites or we'll pick up a brand and look at certain things but what should you monitor you must know the target who the target audience is you will check their landing page to see if they have call to actions or what is their website like what platforms are they on how are they positioning themselves in any campaign that you see this will enable you make better decisions and to enable you to generate more revenue what to monitor your products your pricing and your packaging why do you want to monitor your clients i mean your clients opponents or competitors products pricing and packaging you want to see what's available in the market that's the very first reason you want to see what they're charging for a similar service that you're offering or what they're charging for other services sometimes it could even help you improve your own packaging because sometimes competition helps you improve your own services because some people may come to you and say if i tell you oh the reason i buy i went to xyz security company is because i absolutely love their um the, the way their security guards dress that is their packaging how do they represent themselves i remember there was once i used i started using one specific taxi company and you won't believe the reason i used that taxi company was because of the air freshener in the taxi the air freshener was just different for me it, it didn't make me car sick it was just smelling amazing so i started using that taxi company more than the other taxi companies that were around me i did not mind waiting for that taxi it was before uber so you can imagine how old this uh, long ago this was i did not mind waiting if there was no taxi available because i knew once i got into that taxi their drivers were in suits they had an amazing air freshener and they had free wi-fi so they had add-on services that i could use now a company like uber observed what the competition was doing and decided to improve on it and create something amazing so understanding how your competition packages themselves how they price themselves and how they do what they do it enables you to improve your services i'm going to pause here for a second and ask the question for those that said brand in progress and those that said brand complete if anyone wants me to use their brands as example for those that are not aware we always use brands as example to create whatever we want to create because i believe that if we're making it practical you will be able to understand better what I am saying. So if you want me to use your brand as an example, we can clearly use your brand as an example. We can identify your brand competition and then look into what they do and how we can improve our services. And I'll let you know how you can use all this information to create a brand that is a bit more holistic. So we monitor their customer reviews what are people saying about their brand are people giving them one stars are people giving them five stars why are people recommending um prefer why do people prefer coke to pepsi those are two competitive brands coke and pepsi why do people prefer coke and pepsi some people will say oh the taste is better people have different reasons for 
preferring one brand to the other. So you need to understand what people are saying about the brand. The best place to look at this is by looking at their customers and their reviews. Another thing I want you to monitor is their social media. Look at their content. And um, this is where I will spend a little time and we can go back and forth and look at a brand as an example. When you're looking at your competition, you want to check what platforms they are on. Different brands or different industries need to be on different brands primarily. A TikToker is already someone that creates TikTok or dance videos. They are primarily on TikTok. But you've seen the transition of from them from TikTok to YouTube because there are other people on YouTube and they become vloggers on YouTube. Why are TikTokers moving to YouTube? Because YouTube is a place that can house their content in a way that will connect more with their audience. Okay, um, you want the link so others can join. Um, one second, let me see if I can get the link. Sorry about that. Or oh, if you're on the call, if any other person can share the link with comfort, that will be fine. If not, I will share the link. All right. So you want to mention, you want to monitor where your audience are. So you go there. So now we're looking at the audience for TikTok as being people that will watch YouTube videos. So you'll see a TikTok are now moving to YouTube. Why? They've monitored their competition. They've seen people in other industries grow brands, have how many million subscribers and create brand deals for themselves. So you see that they do not remain on only one platform. They are going into other platforms. So that's one thing you have to understand. You need to clearly understand where your audience are staying so you can connect with them on that platform. All right. Apart from that, what else do you need to do? You need to look at the words they are using, the hashtags they are using. And we'll talk more about hashtags on Tuesday. But today is just to mention a couple of things that I want you to be on the lookout for when you start creating for your brand. Because if you are able to identify at least one type of competition, either your direct competition, like I said, we will talk more details about this. But if you're able to monitor the words they are using, it helps you with your search engine optimization. It helps you assess the quality you can bring and what you bring differently to the market. So another thing I would like you to monitor will be this thing, will be your, their social media. But I want you to ask yourself these three questions because you said monitor their social media, monitor their products and pricing. But how do you decide who you are monitoring? You have to ask yourself, who am I up against? What do I do to find out who I'm up against and how to spot them? Three questions I want you to ask yourself. So with John, John, you told us the name of your client, can you, of the brand you're representing. So as a security company, who are you representing? Sorry. Okay. Hello, John. Do you want us to use your brand as an example? Is your mouth, can you can you people hear me? Because I know Comfort just asked for the link. Has someone been able to share the link with her? Okay, as someone be able to comfort, have you gotten the link you need? Okay, I'm going to continue if um, I don't get a response. Okay, fantastic. So, oh, Comfort says she hasn't gotten it. Isioma, can you share the link with Comfort, please? Okay, awesome. Fantastic. So I can continue. Oh, Richard, thank you so much. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Everyone is looking at us and see if I love this. Okay, so what am I up against? To determine who you're up against, you first of all have to know who you are and what you do. So as NKBC, if you can type in the comment section, what does NKBC do and who will be the people that need NKBC? If I know about your brand, I can actually talk about it. So Neighbor Kids Bible Club is a Bible club for kids. So their target audience are kids. However, children under the age of 13 do not really have the right to do anything without their parents' consent. So NKBC is appealing to parents that want their children to grow up in a Bible club that will help their kids improve themselves. So how do we spot them? What do we look for? You use keywords to look for them online. So we go to places, you just can just Google Kiddies Bible Club in Lagos because you've looked at three things. You've looked at your location. You've looked at... um two keywords kids and bible club but the fact that you put the bible club there you're able to determine if there are other bible clubs in your area but then you've narrowed it to your location because this is my opinion and others may not agree i think when you are looking at competition you should look outside your jurisdiction and outside your locality outside your country why i say this is although yes we ask there are certain things that will be culturally sensitive when you are creating a brand you want to create a brand that appeals to people globally also. So if someone in, for example, Priye just joined us, Priye as a lingerie company, Priye will not be man ma managing a business or pop looking at a competition as the person at Alaba as a, a direct competition. She can look at somebody like Victoria's Secret as a primary competition that she wants to become like in the future. Okay, what makes Victoria's Secret different for me? How do I spot them? Where do I find them? Who am I up against? Answering that question, who am I up against, is essential to understand how to decide your top three or your top four competitions that you're going to work with. So we need to have quick dismisses. What are we going to do to eliminate people? So we have NKBC. If we said, okay, what are we going to look for? We can say it's a kids club. If it's a kids club or a kids club that is, if you just put only kids club, you're going to get so many things. You need to eliminate and knock people out. So you put the word Bible, you put Christian. So you've said, okay, I have been able to, I have been able to eliminate death, um, certain kids club away from my competition. I could look at them for inspiration but they won't be the primary people that I am looking at for certain details. So you could start with like 20 companies and start looking for ways to eliminate. So what I used to did when I, when I was doing my gift business was I started with, um, okay, I said I want to create stationaries. That was it. What type of stationery do I want to create? Paper. Where do I want to print it? What kind of paper do I want to? So I started eliminating by bringing out keywords that would help me search properly. You need to understand your position as a brand. Where do you sit as a brand on the larger scale of things? Like I said, you are not comparing. I don't say agbali mo, but I shall, I shall not say that. You are not comparing oranges to mangoes. You are comparing oranges to oranges, but sometimes you could still get the inspiration from mangoes. So you have to know who to knock out to determine what the competition, the competition you will focus on. What are the basic things you should look at when you're looking for your competition and looking at your competition? I look at the products and services, their pricing and their discounting, and I will explain why. Sometimes I don't offer all the services, so sometimes I collaborate with people like Chima just came on the call. I can collaborate with Emma. Emma taught us storytelling. Chima taught us today, and we had George teach us the other day. If I had seen them as competition and I had not reached out to them or connected with them, there will be no way I will realize that there are certain services that I can outsource to them that I cannot, I will not outrightly say no. <laughs> Is it I'm wondering why you are laughing. I did not call any fruits that everybody knows about. So determining their products and services and their pricing and discounting. Sometimes, is it every time you want to give a discount? How often does your competition give discounts? You need to know all these things. Those are the basic details you should look at. So Priye, if I ask you, who are your competition? What are the products and services they offer? What's their price range and what's their discount? This is 
what you need to think about. You need to think about your competition from the perspective that you would play if you were in their roles. What will you... My phone is distracting me. I shall remove it from me completely. Okay, I'm back fully. Products and services, pricing and discounts. The three basics. Isabella. All right, let's go to Isabella. Since you're laughing at my brand emojis, let's look at your brand. If you're looking at your competition, your competition, your brand is basically services. Your brand doesn't offer um, any price because it's a charity. So definitely it's not offering discounts. So what you will look at instead when you're looking at other charities, for that you can look at events. You can look at what they sponsor and organizations they support. So you can look at the courses they support. So there is no blanket rule. It depends on what you do. Let's bring it down to the basics. If you're looking at a church, what are the things you're going to look at? With a church, you don't have pricing and discounts also because they are rendering a service. They are doing God's work. But what kind of services do they have? What kind of events do they have? What kind of ministries do they pay attention to? How is their children's ministry? How is their women's ministry? How is their men's ministry? What's the proportion of pictures that they share online? But those are the basic details you should check. The services and all the other pricing options, events to me, is something else you should look at. Now, we're going to spend a little time here on this page. And I'm going to use, I think the first person that volunteered themselves was Dummy Secure. So, John, we're going to do this together. And we're going to look at your competition's Instagram page. Basically, we're not going to go further than that. We're going to look at your competition's Instagram page since you've not started building the page yet. The focus is the competition. You're going to look at what makes you win when you compare yourself to your competition. What makes you lose? What are the landmines? And I describe landmines as this. A landmine is used to expose a competitor's weakness. So the prospect now has, a, has to make a decision between a deficient product aka your competitor's product and a more complete product. Remember last week we talked about objections people can have when it comes to patronizing you. Then you come up with a go-to marketing strategy and an objection strategy. Why are we building this card? Why are we doing this? And simply this, we are doing this so we can see what makes you different. So you are able to focus on the people you should focus on. We are able to see the loopholes. The truth is, I don't like driving, but when you're driving, I've been told you have a blind spot. Everybody has a blind spot. I think I've gotten it because of mine. And there are certain things that you may not see if you go into your company. You may not see it because you're focused, laser focused on certain things. But if you are able to either do this yourself or outsource it, find out where you win when it comes to your competition, where you lose, those two things help you handle objections when someone comes to you and help you make better decisions when it comes to creating for your brand. So we're going to make a comparison between um, Domi Secure and John. Please let me know the competitor we'll be looking at because I know I asked you to look into this earlier. But if John isn't ready, we'll go to Wilson where Wilson will help us know the competition to the client he is working on on like we said if you're representing a brand today you write um what did i say brand rep if you are creating a brand and your brand is in progress brand in progress if you have a brand that is already created then you tell us that that's your, that your brand you are creating for your brand and that is brand complete so we add zura and she does candles so Zura is one of the brand complete brand we add. And I think that was the only brand complete we add um, for today. But let me see. Can you all still hear me? Or am I talking to myself? Can you all still hear me? I think I'm still alive. 
Okay, we have one brand in progress. Okay. So that is, you have a brand, or you're still looking into what you're doing. Mary. Okay. Zura said loud and clear. So we have someone like Zura that does candles. So brand in progress. And we can look at the different ways she can win. Fantastic. Okay, because you guys are we're all very quiet. Isabel, yeah, I'm glad you can hear me because I asked a question before you disappeared. All right. So let's look at Zura's brand since she has a brand complete. She has to look at what makes her different from uh, from other candle sellers. Why she would win a competi a, a, an audience heart because of our products and why they would go to someone else. Like I said, the reason I uh, Curry and PC World is your is your competition. Fantastic. Okay, so let's use um, Wilson. When we look at why we win when it comes to Curry's and PC World. Should we start with why we win or why we lose? Let's start with why we lose. Let's take the loss first before we'll talk about why we win. Why do we lose when we come to comparing ourselves with Corey's and PC World? With Corey's and PC World, the first thing they have is they have branches nationwide. So anybody can walk into a branch and try one of their gadgets. So that's one way we are losing when it comes to creating content or creating products that we need to sell as the company that Wilson is representing. Another thing that Corey's and PC World has, is to, um, Wilson, can you share one other reason why you think Corey's and PC World will win over a client? Like I said, today is a strategy session. We are not just going to make it all look beautiful. All right. So we have two people giving us things now. We have three people now. Okay. So we have Wilson, we have Zura, and we have Asa. As I said, why she would win will be eco-friendly packaging. Is that why you would win or why you would lose? Could you just write win and your answer and lose and your answer? Then we can see how we can improve it. And then John said Asa security. So are you saying Asa security is your direct competition? What platform are they on? Okay, so eco-friendly, chemical-free. Okay, let's fix our eyes on Zura. So in case you don't know, Zura is a candle making company. So where she gets people's attention, where she wins is it's eco friendly and it's chemical free. Now she has to ask herself, does my competition have those same things? Are they eco friendly and are they chemical free? Why will someone buy from them and not buy from me? Why will someone buy from me and not from them? Another thing that could make her win is she's, she's an independent store. Some people like supporting small businesses. So if she says it's an homemade small business product, that is something that is different from a candle shop like Jo Malone that is an industrial made product. So she's like, it's less dangerous to the environment. Everything is produced with love. We do not mass produce. When you mass produce because you use soy candles, it's dangerous. So she knows where she wins. She wins because she does less production and she ensures it's chemical free. That's one way she's winning. And it's eco friendly. Let's just take two things eco friendly and chemical free. That's where she wins. Where she may lose, maybe bulk orders. So if someone says, I want 5,000 candles now, can she deliver 5,000 candles? No. So she knows that she doesn't take bulk orders. So she has already planned ahead of time. To say, okay, if I if or when is on Black Friday and there are lots of sales, other people may want to buy those expensive candles and then can she give as much discounts as those people give? No, that's where she loses. Now that she's aware of where she wins and where she loses, she is able to make better decisions to create a marketing strategy or a brand story that will make the audience want to buy from her. So that's for Zuran um Zuran candles. That's for Zura. That's for my end. Okay. So what will our go to market strategy be? Our go to market strategy will now be emphasis on small batches, em emphasis on eco friendly, emphasis on handmade, emphasis on small businesses made with love, handmade. Those are the little keywords she'll be using when she's putting out her candles and writing her brand story. And emphasis on her brand story, why did she start a candle business? Understanding what makes her different from the big competition rather than trying to 
go directly at the big competition and beat them only at price. She's beating them at strategy. That is what competition analysis does for you. It makes you understand your go-to-market strategy. So you are not fighting a battle that you will lose. You're fighting a battle that you stand a better chance of winning. So what I want everybody to do is I want you to be able to build this craft, this craft, this answers to these questions in a way that you'll be able to in, um, unearth the information you require to connect with your prospects, to connect with your prospects and convert them to um, paid clients because you have prospects that come to your page and just glance over your page, but you want to convert them to paid clients. How do you do that? Your go to market strategy helps you do that. Then I don't know if everybody has done their objection handling. I would have asked um, Milson or someone else to let us know their objection handling so we can understand how you handle objection. If the objection someone has is, oh, I, why are your candles more expensive than the other stores? I buy from this store and it's not so expensive because Mayan already understands that that's an objection someone we have. Should we have a ready-made answer? That's what I mean by objection handling. What is your backup plan? What is the answer to that question that you will think will be, why is this person asking me this silly question? But it's a legit question the person has. How do you handle objection handling to why your clients, why your competition is winning? How do you handle objections to why your clients, I mean your competition is winning? If the competition is winning because they can do large batches and you know that they already use soy candles yeah like soy candles are, i don't know if i'm right about soy candles my unit, but that's what just comes to mind but like soy candles are not good for the environment i create candles that are good for the environment my candles help you sleep she can talk about all the benefits and what our candles do when we are selling we are selling the benefits not the products so yes i'm a i am passionate about using the right colors using the right strategy using the right pictures and all those things. I always tell my clients that if you, you're not good in graphics and you have a low budget, just get templates made for you. I say all these things, but I think that we should learn to sell the benefits. If you want to sell something to me now, you sell convenience to me because I want something that will make my life a bit more convenient. Someone else may not want that. Someone may be like, okay, I, I want value for money, but I need to understand other things that what else can it do for me? Everybody has what they need. It's your job to think about how you can create a product that makes you win by identifying where your client, your, uh, your competition will also win and where your competition will lose and where you will lose. That becomes your go-to-market strategy. So Mayan's go-to-market strategy could em place emphasis on I'm a small-scale business that, or a homemade business that creates bespoke candles that are, so she has created, personalized to your taste. So everybody knows that these big store candles can't personalize a candle that much. If they're going to personalize, it's still going to be the same thing, but it's not really personalized for me. If um, Priye is like, oh, I handpick the perfect lingerie for you, I to give you care tips, I do this. She is bringing something else that the big brands cannot do for you. Once you get into most of these big stores, that human element is removed. So what Wilson can say is we bring the human elements to home security. So these big brands do not do that. That's, they, they are big, yes, they can reach more people, agreed, but they are a bit distant because they employ people that do not understand the company culture. This is where we are different. So what you're trying to do when you're looking at why we win, why we lose, also look at why they win, which is why you lose, and what you can do to make your brand stand out, even if you know that we may have lost this battle, but we've not lost the war. Any question? I think I've used three brands for this. But we're going to go into more details when it comes to this. We're going to look at this and um when we're creating for ourselves for, for our brands we are thinking about this thing and we've done this before but i just wanted us to talk about it again we're looking exactly and made benefits outweighs big brands we are exclusive we are exclusive it's not for everyone 
So it's just about you understanding that, yes, the big brands have not much more money and a lot more to put on adverts and other things, but you have something that they do not have. They have that human connection. Sell that human connection. Everybody wants to know that they are talking to a brand. So now, when we go to the t specific types of competition, Mayan will be able to see where she can now place big brands, smaller brands that are like her. So if her and that same brand are talking to the same person, why would they come to her when that other person makes handmade goods? So what makes a brand different? And the same thing will apply to the Bible club, will apply to the security company, will apply to the charities or the churches or every other person. Uh, the churches is a bit different, but we'll get into that. Now, what problems are people facing? List their three top three frustrations and then think about the alternatives. So we're looking at the problem, the um, solutions and the existing alternatives. The reason I wanted Mayan to look at existing alternatives and I want everybody to look at existing alternatives is who can replace you? What brand can create something that will replace you in the market? It's not a big name brand. It's a small brand like you. You offer identical services. How can they replace you and what can you do about it to get yourself that competitive edge back? What is that unfair advantage that you have over that person? that makes your brand different so as usual i'm going to highlight these two and make them colored so we know that that's it. those are the parts we are looking at let me choose another color i think i'll go for pink all right so the two boxes we are looking at are the red one and the pink one fantastic problems alternatives and your solution the problems, the alternatives, and your solution. So we are going to do this. I've put a document I want everybody to look at. If you, I know if you put say I give you lots of pages. This page is the most important page that everybody should at least fill. It's something you should have close to you. I've called it the brand competition plan. What problems are people facing? What problems are people facing? List their top three frustration. What are the existing alternatives? And how will you solve this problem? Write down a solution for each problem. We're going to do the problem solution framework in, a little, in more details when we get to content creation as one of the ways we create content tomorrow. But let's look at the problems people face. And um, I think I will just go pick one problem for each brand that we've used so far. We'll just pick one problem, one alternative, and one solution that will provide, that will make us different before we go to the types of uh, competition. So what brand do we pick now? I think I've spoken. Um, Zura, do you want me to continue with your brand or does any other person want to offer their brand up for, for us to take um, this thing? All right. So we have... All right, so I'm just going to write the name of the brand and then we will proceed. So the three problems people face, people that use this brand currently. So for those that are not aware, Domi Secure is a security company. The three problems people face are private security. That's one why do they need private security and who needs private security? We've already defined this area. So that's why I'm able to, for, so those that are just joining us today for the first time, over the past couple of um, days, we've been, okay, Maya said I can continue with our brand. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at a couple of brands and we always use brands as example. So today we're going to look at the Dummy brand, Dummy Secure. We're going to look at Zuran also. And then we're going to pick one more brand and I will just pick randomly. I try my best not to do preferential treatment and just make it as people are volunteering themselves so that we are able to make um, this thing. So Mayan, if you can tell us 
what are the problems people are facing list the the top frustrations people that use your products are facing will you be able to describe the first three um problems they are facing And if you're in agreement with what I'm writing here, I'd, I'd like to see what you just in. But I know it's an it's a wellness brand, so it's about they're facing anxiety, they have stress. We can say they're almost the same, and then they're struggling to find balance in what they do. Anxiety, stress, balance. So we can say most people that use candles are just finding ways to relax. I know you do more than candles, but we're just going to use candles now I want to put the words I'm writing in red so that they stand out fantastic all right so we've said one way they, they could be problems they could be facing are anxiety stress and balance if you had to choose one of these three problems or frustrations that your clients usually have which of these three will you pick? Okay, I think what I'm going to do is, I think I will get my timer so that we are able to... Stress. Okay, she said stress. Fantastic. Stress. Awesome. Stress. Okay. Is there an existing alternative that they can have when it comes to stress management? So we said we're going to work on stress, which is this one. Is there an existing alternative when it comes to stress ma management that they can use? Do you think of an existing alternative and what's your solution? So if you think about the existing alternative they can have, then what your solution is that makes it better than that alternative, you are in a better way to convince them to buy your products. Remember, we said we are selling the benefits, not necessarily the product. So we are not selling a candle. We are selling a way for you to relax and release the stress. So I like the way you put the candles and do things that you do already. But what other alternatives, are there existing alternatives that are in direct competition with what you do? And how will you solve the problem? So if you think about the way you solve problems, and I think you already solved those problems in a way, because when you sell your candle, you sell more than the candle. You sell, you send an email to teach them how to relax your content. Okay, so you're trying to say chemicals an alternative is using a just using any candle but your candles are natural remedies and they're not addictive fantastic in addition to that to your candles you can also look at ways people can yeah i understood what you said um you can also look at additional things that you can put on your content page which is something we will get into tomorrow that could also help them relieve or resolve or solve their problem. So that's when we talk about the value you bring in addition to your products. So yes, you sell the candle, but you also give tips on stress management. So 
so you are not just selling candles to them you become someone that is doing more than candles so while another page may just have beautiful pictures of candles only you're doing something else you are giving them the candles but you are also making them realize that there are other ways to relax maybe giving them practices or having wednesday exactly self-care tips so your self-care tips could come in your wisdom wednesdays your quotes and everything you put on your page the aim is to be different from your competition not just post for posting sake or post a well thought out photo shoot but you've thought about how is this content going to make this person's life less stressful what can i do that will be appealing to the person and make the person calm down if it's someone that is struggling with sleep you could suggest an app they could use so the tips that you are giving is how you are solving their problem the candle alone doesn't solve the problem the candle and the tips that you've given are helping them relax and make them realize that they are not alone and making them understand and sharing your stories also could also help them solve their problems so you are not just selling the candles you become more than a candle seller you become more holistic and that will be where your page is taking what I call brand 360 is taking every aspect of your brand into consideration it's taking what you sell why you sell it and how you sell it into consideration and you're selling more than candles all right I think we've done one for you let's move to the next person which is dummy secure so with dummy secure let's see what do you what are the pop people's frustrations and people that get your services are celebrities so we already know security is a problem for them so celebrities struggling with having security problems they want to find a way to feel more secure they want to be safe so safety is an issue safety and security why do they need safety Why do they need safety? What else do they need? What else do this security, these people that need security need? The existing alternatives will provide security. Yes, they will provide security. They will provide safety and security. But there's something else that these people need that is more than security. And if you think about it from their perspective, they want a person they can trust. So they want confidentiality. So what you are selling apart from selling your security duties will be confidentiality. We do not leak out your secrets to the press. We do not tell everybody, oh, I, I walked with this person today. Tomorrow I'm going to carry this person, then paparazzi and everybody is waiting for them. You hear things in the car, you do not disclose it. So that confidentiality could be something that you are doing that nobody else is doing. You have to look for what makes you different. So yes, you keep them safe, but more than safety, they want to ensure that their information is also safe. That is something in addition that you can offer to your clients, apart from just saying, why security company? Now you've understood that other companies provide security. Other companies provide bodyguards that have, that are trained. So you can't say we have well-trained people. Yes, we have well-trained people. Well, who are these people? They are reliable, they are human, they will respect your privacy, they will respect your information. That is something in addition to what you're offering already that can be added to your communication. So we'll go back to this. Why, hi Lucinda, why are we looking at the problem alternatives and your solution? We're looking at the problem alternatives and your solution because we want you to stand out. Everybody else, other security companies are, are employing security guards. They are trained. Some of them are ex-military. They keep you safe. They keep you secure. They do every single thing. Why should I come to your security company and not go to someone else? Is it because your security guards wear nice uniforms and they wear dark shades? Dark shades can be bought in, the, in, in traffic. Everybody can have dark shades. So you can say, oh, our security guards are, called, are trained in negotiating they're able to keep you secure with high rate of kidnapping they have they have these tactics you can sell their tactics and what they can do or you can sell the benefits and make the women they are securing also know that they are in safe hands don't just sell only don't just say i have bodyguards don't just say i have security men 
sell something different that your competition does not place emphasis on if you go through your competition's websites i'm sure you've done that john you will understand that confidentiality is something that most people want if how many people will employ a security guard that says i am very confident uh, that is confidential how many people here if you will say i will if you will not say mm, it's confidentiality doesn't mean anything to me but for me i want a security guard that is confidential i want a va that is confidential that can keep all the non-disclosed agreements secure then how do you ensure that your bodyguards are confidential you tell them you have an nda that is signed between you and your security guards and they cannot disclose any information to the isb that they will be held liable so you've given them security and you've given them assurance and you've done this because you've understood your competition competition analysis enables you this define loopholes in the system what we've called landmines in the first instance it helps you understand your unique value proposition it helps you understand what gives you unfair advantage it helps you also know what channels you can reach your target market are you going to do direct marketing are you going to use social media apps are you going to use partnerships by partnering or collaborating with new people by doing a competition analysis you understand where your audience are you understand what your competition is doing to get your audience attention you are observing what they've done in order for you to learn remember we said we observe to learn not to copy the aim of competition analysis i'll keep repeating it is not for you to copy and paste what someone else has done it's for you to learn from them and make decisions that will improve the quality of the services that you offer so you are learning and making changes any question i think we're going to take questions for the next four minutes and then we'll continue any questions Okay, so if there are no questions, let's go to the types of competition. Now, we've been talking a lot about competition, but who exactly are you looking at? And is everybody your competition? No, we have different types of competition. We have what we call direct competition or your primary competition, secondary competition or indirect competition, your tertiary competition and your replacement competition. Who can replace you <laughs> with a snap of a finger? Anyway, we'll get into all that and see how we can use that to improve our brands. Direct competition. I said, these are your direct competition, which means they're either targeting the same audience or have a similar product or both. It, direct competition offers the same products and services aimed at the same target market and customer base with the same goal of profit and market share growth. This means that your direct competition are directing the same people as you. I'm saying the same thing. Do you know who is directly in competition with you for the services that you offer? So we're looking at the services, the price, the audience. So we're not looking at the fact that it's Arrows versus Zura. Does everybody know their direct competition here? All right, let's go to specific brands. We've used Zura, we've used Dummy, we've used NKBC. Okay, let's look at Mary. All right, so Mary is... um. 
she's she her brand is in progress but she will have people that are in direct competition with her and those people could offer something similar to what she has or something different completely to what she is offering now so she sells via whatsapp and she sells yeah at, so mary do you know anybody that does exactly what you do for the specific audience that you are targeting All right, Timei, you want to go instead? Um, I think it could be, Priya, that's a good question. I think it could be, I will look at it as both local or international because when I'm looking at my direct competition, I don't look, I look at brands that offer similar services in the way I offer it and they could be anywhere on the globe. So I look at people that offer services that I want to offer. Okay, no, that's another type of competition. It could be local or international. They just offer the same services you offer to similar people and sometimes at the same price point. So for example, with you, you can say, mm, I sell lingerie. Victoria's Secret is my direct competition. La Senza is my direct competition because people are selling the same thing, lingerie. So that's your direct competition. And if anybody wants to feel their direct competition and all these things as we're speaking, if you go under units um, for audience analysis, there's a document there on competition analysis that you can use to start filling it. I was supposed to mention that and I haven't sent it to Isioma, so she won't be able to send that to you till after the class. But yes, your direct competition could be local or international. I will recommend looking at both local or an international. So you could have a direct competition that is local or your primary um, listing that is local and one that is international. Why will I recommend doing this? And I'm just going to go back to my document here. So the reason I would recommend you do that is because you want to be able to learn from them. Someone that is in your industry, you and in the same locality, you guys maybe have, um, have the same resources and be thinking in the same way. But if you are aiming to improve your business and be the best person doing that business globally and not just locally and be and gain um, international recognition for what you do then it's always good to look beyond local um, local competition. So in the first page, you will get to write a couple of people that are your primary competition, secondary competition. So you can have local and international written here. And when you now decide to work on a specific one, you will be filling the details in here on this page on the document. So you just have the name of the competition, what they offer, their social media presence, and any other detail that you have. Or always just write the name of your brand also so that you know when you are reviewing it or when you're sending it to me to review but basically i will recommend pick one that is local pick one that is international the local one may be selling just by whatsapp for those in nigeria or just on instagram if you are comparing yourself with that person and because you are selling more than the person you may think that oh i am doing well at least i can ship around lagos People are shipping internationally from Nigeria. There are people demanding for products on Instagram. Okay, fantastic. Yes. Okay. Fantastic, Priyi. So, um, Timei said she will look at Cantu and Treasure Trust. And those are, uh, Treasure Trust is um, another type of competition, but I like the fact that you mentioned it. So, Cantu does natural air products. Natural Nyota does natural air products. But Treasure Trust does natural health products, but they do not produce natural health products. Cantu produces and sells variety of natural health products. So Cantu is a direct competition of natural neota. So now let's look at secondary. Secondary competitions are, may offer a high or low-end version of your product or sell something similar to a completely different audience. So for example, um, the difference between Mama Puts and eating in Sheraton Hotel. They both sell rice. They both feed people. One is high-end. 
one is by the roadside the difference between pekere and plantain chips all is packaging so it's about understanding that there are some people that will be offering a high-end version of your product and some people will be offering a low-end version of your product those are people that you should still not ignore so you're looking at your primary competition but you're also looking at your secondary competition and your indirect competition so so you're looking at your indirect competition so yes in a way they are secondary but they are indirect they're offering something similar but at a different price so um okay give me a product and i'll look at a high end and a low end version that everybody will understand because i was going to say it's like having arrows and primark both selling blankets one is more expensive and one will be not be expensive it's like wearing a Chanel and carrying a um, bag that was just made by any other person. One is Gucci. Both of them are wearing, selling t-shirts, but one person is selling Gucci. One person is selling something different. So that's your secondary competition. You are not catering to the same target audience, but you may be offering the same product. Do you know who that person is? So for Zuran, it may be Harold selling candles. That is our secondary competition or Joe Malone, they both sell candles, but one is a secondary competition. I want us to go out of our way and observe these people. Remember, we are observing to learn, not observing to just copy and paste everything they are doing because they are doing something well. What is it that they are doing well that we can learn from and improve on the services that we are offering? Branding is about improving yourself consistently, but not changing or transforming your brand completely. Improving doesn't mean changing your brand message and becoming I earned. Improving means finding a better way to do it or sticking to the way you're doing it. Not changing your personality, not changing your tone. We've talked about tone and personality, not changing your brand personality or your brand tone, but changing the way you are bringing out your brand, bringing out the best value for you. So you're looking at your secondary competition and your primary competition also and we said the secondary is indirect they're not directly going to the same target market that you are but they are going to a target market i can't think of a nigerian designer it's just the frame between wearing a gucci shirt and going to a tailor or meeting or oh, there are some tailors that so very expensive dresses in nigeria and there's some and you go to the tailor down your road that will sell something cheaper they are both in the same A lot fantastic Wilson you got you just hit the nail on the head Alaba International is a low-end competition for you yes they sell they also sell electronics but they do not sell the type of electronics that you're selling so you are in the middle you're somewhere there one is high end one is low end fantastic okay now Remember, Amaka, I talked about the tertiary competition and I said this competition are different because they are offering services that you may start offering in the future. For example, if I sell jewelry, a competition may sell gemstones. I do branding. My competition may do websites. I do branding. My competition may do logos. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oluchi said network is bad. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry, Oluchi. So you have to understand that there are also competition that you should also look at what they are doing. It could also offer a way for us to expand. And now here comes Amaka's recommendation. She mentioned um, um, Treasure Trails. They do natural air products, but they do natural air products subscription boxes. Now, the subscription boxes, what they that box with that box, they collate or they bring together different companies and send you a box monthly. That can be a service you can offer in the long run. It's a subscription service that they have, but you're making that subscription service subscription to your own products and other things that they do. So if I do natural air, I can say, oh, my competition could be people that do combs. It could be people that do those subscription boxes. It could be someone different. If anybody wants to give me their brand, I can think of a, this thing. 
but this is a competition that everybody knows that's why i said when we get to the replacement competition it's where everybody already should have good job who, who can replace you in this industry so whether it's direct indirect they say who can replace you a replacement computer is another company that is offering a product or services that the customer could use instead of choosing your product or your services have you thought about that if price was not a problem who can replace me at the say, oh my price is cheaper no what is the person getting that is different from yours apart from price not say oh my price is cheaper come to me i can do it cheaper for you. i think that's a marketing tactic that so many people use oh i will do it cheaper i will do it cheaper i will do it cheaper so many people come with that tactic but it doesn't always pay in the long run or some people will just say i will sell it at this price because i don't know when i will see money again and they sell and they skyrocket their prices and it's flung to it um i um sorry i'm answering questions as we're going just in case anyone is wondering so Timmy you said as i am uk or for coily hair yes i agree with you as i am uk or for coily hair because number i don't know if as i am uk is also a homemade brand but they can easily replace you they offer similar products to natural hair lovers that want natural products so natural hair being afro hair natural products being products that are natural without chemical so they offer three different things that you offer what can be different sometimes the packaging draws you to a product so you, remember we said look at their packaging can they replace you because of their packaging if your packaging is not good enough and you see that these products will can replace you then this thing you look at your reviews what is it that people say about you that you think that will make people not to come to you because the truth is tr marketing has changed completely traditional marketing was a lot easier to manipulate people now with marketing it's easy to get feedback from people and get immediate returns on investment when it comes to getting doing research on your competition you just go to the reviews yes there are some paid reviews but there are some honest reviews go on youtube people have done videos on the product Look at what people are saying about your product. Some products, I think there's a product I wanted to use, and the first thing everybody said about the product when I saw it, it does an I love Asian products when it comes to skincare. And everybody's talked about the smell. This product is amazing, it's better than this product, but the smell will piss you off completely. And when I opened the product, it smelled like kerosene to me. For those that are not Nigerian, um, I think almost everyone here is African. It smelled like kerosene. So even if the product was amazing, it just smelled like kerosene to me. And I was like, I cannot start rubbing kerosene on my face. So that was something that I was able to replace that good with because of one problem. So have you listened to your people enough to understand why they will replace your product with ease? And what are you doing about that? Chima mentioned today that all feedback is feedback should be looked at before you make a decision sometimes feedback helps you make better decisions on packaging feedback helps you make better decisions on pricing on different things on the way you offer your services you cannot call yourself a customer centric brand and everybody that is answering your messages on instagram your customer um your brand representatives are all very very rude that somebody says um Please, what's the price of this? And they're like, can't you read? It's, it's in the, it's in the caption. That's a rude statement to make. But you've called yourself a customer-centric brand. That means the person representing your brand is is making your brand sound different. There's a salon. I won't mention the name. I went to the salon because I was looking to replace the salon I was going to before I eventually and I and I went there twice. And I didn't go back. The reason I went back the second time was I went the first day. Then I went the next day to get complete, get my hair done. And after that, I haven't smelled that salon and I will never go in there again. Although they are amazing. Why did they not replace my salon I was using? Because of their customer service. And I ran into someone else and we were talking about it. And we had the same experience. People talk. So we Googled it and we realized that almost everyone was having the same experience so if that lady was doing a um 
not just googling herself but also googling her competition she will notice that they will say compare to this this is better to this two people are good at this but when you compare it to this i would rather go for this what is that brand that can replace you comfortably and what are you willing to change to make sure your brand cannot be replaced is your brand irreplaceable how many of us can confidently say our brands are irreplaceable it's difficult for us to yes feedback is so important to how you develop your brand i agree feedback is really really vital for how you develop your brand if we do not understand that there are certain things we need to put in place before we create our brand we're going to keep on making the same mistake not realizing that there are changes that we would have made or there are certain things we will have stuck with have you not seen it that sometimes a brand will do um, an update or something and everybody will get upset with it so why does all this matter why am i talking about your competition why am i asking you to know your direct your replacement competition you need to know your position in the market if you remember earlier i said what's your brand position understanding where you are is the most important thing to do for your brand i will make a reference to warfare as i always say if you're in um war or in any situation and you do not know your counterpart it's going to be difficult for you to succeed because you do not know what you are working against you can create a website and say, oh, my template is amazing. But you created that template 10 years ago. 10 years ago, that template was amazing. And you've not updated it because you've not seen what is currently in the market. So we have to keep updating ourselves. Find out where your target audience are. Where do they pay attention to? What are the interactions on their social media profile? And what we're going to do is we're going to fill, I'm going to fill the form completely for one brand. And this one will be fastest finger. Anybody that volunteers their brand, when we are true talking about this, we will spend the last 30 minutes filling the form for that person's brand if the person has their competition ready and then we'll see how i'll give you a real life example of how you can research and find out certain things about brands and how you can use that information to transform your own brand now most of the information i'm giving you are transformational information information that will make you position your brand in a better place if your brand is in progress it is amazing because you're just starting so you are able to take a step back and review and reflect if your brand is already in existence you can't really pause you have to keep going but it still gives you <laughs> it still gives you an opportunity Wilson that's not the name of a brand it still gives you an opportunity to reflect and make changes as you go so it's about you understanding your time remember when we started talking we we create we talked about time i always talk about creating time to create now i'm asking you to create time to reflect create time to reflect on what is happening in your industry create time to reflect on what your competition is doing and i'm not just saying do these forms and fill them and move aside no find time to review them and make changes that you are not the changes you should make and make changes one step at a time there is nothing fantastic about january 1st sometimes we always wait till the first of january before we start making taking action the right time to start working on your brand is now you want to be known as a brand that is credible so if someone is thinking of replacing you they'll say oh but this person is quite credible whenever i work with her she always gives me the truth she'll be like oh i'll rather mm, yes me and this person offer a similar service however with the nature of your brand i would rather you go with this person so many people will not do that but i am someone that does that all the time i'll be like yes i understand that i can see the role i will play but i see this person playing a better role understand your words you don't need to fight every battle as a brand know who you your target audience are understand them completely understand your target audience completely I have what we call audience clarity if you have audience clarity you'll be able to determine whether your audience will pay attention to certain things or they would not pay attention to certain things for example i'm in the planner community as someone that is into planners i bought a planner once i wrote on the paper the first day and i was like i can never use this planner again i think i want to return it but the paper just did not appeal to me i gave it to someone else and she did not have a problem with it because she was not a planner person like me so someone people that like paper and stationery we are very intentional about how we write on paper 
So someone that wants to appeal to us and get a movement with a stationary reward will be able to do that if they use the right papers. For somebody else, the person just needs a paper to write. If you know the people you are creating for, you will know what will make them smile and what will make them different. So we talked about understanding your brand and your competition. Why am I placing emphasis on understanding your customer, that's your audience, your brand itself and your competition? What does this do for you? Understanding your brand, understanding your audience, understanding your competition. What difference does it make to your brand? And in my opinion, and if you disagree, let me know. It makes you identify your unique selling proposition. So the customer, you know what the customer wants. You know what your competition does well. And then you know what you do well. So you are able to, so if someone has an objection, oh, I usually go with X, Y, Z. You already ask, you already know what to say because you've seen this person is my client. I know what to say to persuade this person. Like um, Chima said today, I know I'll, if I go into a negotiation, I'll be able to get what the person needs. Know your customer, know yourself, but also do not neglect your competition. Why? It's not just about price. Although I said pay attention to price. Yes, I agree. Understand their price, understand their packaging. But it's much more than that. It's the rhetoric they use, especially when it comes to your direct competition. Because you are appealing to the same person. So you'll be like, why will this person buy from DK and not buy from Wilson? Why would this person buy Zura Cosmetics and not buy Zara Cosmetics? You need to understand what makes you different. What is your unique selling proposition that makes you different from any other brand? Can you categorically say you know what it is? If you can't, then it's time for us to get this work done. So by the end of today, we'll be able to do these treatings for everybody here at least. Understand what your customers want. Mayan has given us what our customers want, so we'll start with her. Understand what your customers want. Understand what your competition does well. Define, even if you don't understand, define what you will do well, you do well, or what you want to start doing well. Should we give it a go? If you want us to give it a go, the class is quiet today. Uh -uh. Is it because it's Friday night? All right, who wants to give it a go? Or do you want me to use my brand as an example? I always use everyone's brand, I don't use my brand. I can use my podcast as an example and I'll do that. My customers want a podcast they can listen to, to learn about productivity and customer relations, content creation and creativity. That's what my customers want. Who are my customers? So I know what they want, but before I can determine what they want, I have to determine who they are. And I will let you know who they are in a while. But let's just say I'm a content creator that creates podcasts, full stop. What does my competition do, do? And what do they do well? They create podcasts, natural neota again. If you all keep quiet, I will assume that everybody understands everything and I won't use any examples. My competition creates podcasts. They create um, freebies for people to create content well. And they create other things that improve the life of a content creator. Who are my customers? My customers are what I have referred to as DIY entrepreneurs and virtual assistants. Those are the people that I appeal to. And most people here are either brand representatives, like we saw brand reps, or they are creating their own brands, which is what I call DIY entrepreneurs. What do I do for them? I teach them DIY branding through my youtube channel which i started this year diy branding with dk jonah that was a plug if you didn't get that i teach them diy branding with, with dk jonah and what else do i do that makes me different but my competition also teaches diy tips on how to create content my competition does all i do so why should someone listen to me and not listen to my competition 
maybe my competition has pre-recorded videos that they release and I do my videos live and by doing my live videos I'm able to ask questions from my audience and answer questions that makes me different the fact that I will use my clients um, I say my clients my audience brands as examples that shows that I am able to think on the spot and it makes me different from my competition that may already come with ready-made answers to answer questions that may be given so that has made me different from any other person so someone that is looking for something really practical and what i will call diy that they can do themselves will come for my show and not my competition show because of the differentiating factor that they are brands going to be used as examples so that's diy entrepreneur for me that is coming for my brand all right so wilson do you agree with that being something that makes it different from the diy um, branding show and other branding shows since i know you've listened to that in the past and then i will say something else that makes me different from my competition in a good way but you need to understand your unique selling proposition the unique selling proposition of DIY branding is that DIY branding is not ready-made. It is very hands-on and practical. We define branding for you, but we tell you that we do not create your brand. We restore your brand. So that's why we're called the restorative brand agency. We're an agency that helps you restore your creative ideas and give it its twist with your unique personality taken into consideration. So we're not building a new persona for you. We are already unlocking what is already in you. So that's the unique strategy I use. That could be different from someone else who could be a competition that is doing a similar service, but that is a differentiating factor that makes people come to me. So I would ask a question, and I know I'm shooting myself in the foot by asking this question, and anyone can answer. Why did you sign up for DIY branding the videos or instagram marathon and why didn't you sign up for another course anyone can answer but i've just said what makes me different what i feel makes me different now that is what i feel is what i feel what others are feeling now that's a question that we are that only my audience can answer i cannot answer that question i can make assumptions and say this is how i would like them to feel I would like people to feel that when they come to my brand that they are heard that i understand them that their ideas are not stupid but they have something in them that could make them create maximum impact so i'm very impact driven and value driven i'm not about the numbers i always tell people i don't play the number game no i am about value and impact so someone that is about value and impact will be drawn to me Someone that is about, I want to make nine figures in one month will not be drawn to me. And I am not drawn to people that tell their people, I will get you 1 million followers in one, in one year. Those people don't get my attention, but they are people that they get their attention. So what I do that makes me different from my competition is I have studied my competition. I have understood that yes, they are about numbers but I can learn something from them. Before, I just used to be like, I don't play the number game and I don't even look at any other person. But that did not help, my, help me at all. So I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn from my competition. I had to learn by understanding myself. I had to learn by understanding my customers. Are you able to take these three things into consideration and create a unique brand that will make people connect with you but you have to understand hey if i'm making my head swell say my style and my unique and my passion of what i do but but see now this makes me smile because that is what i want people to feel somebody else that is like oh i just want to make six figures or nine figures by the end of the year <laughs> and i'm there are people that are like I want you to make nine figures by the end of the year. I don't care how you are emotionally. I don't care how you are anyway. You will make that money. Someone that wants that kind of drive will draw their own audience. So I am not going to compete for their audience's attention. I already know my people, but I also know my competition. 
I also know my competition. So what makes me different is, and all the things they are saying, I didn't ask anybody to say this. Like I said, it was impromptu. What the things they are saying are the things that I are about my brand personality that I have already defined clearly. So if you've not defined your brand personality, it's going to be difficult to know what your brand does and what your brand does well. You can just say, I sell lingerie. Okay, why should someone come and buy from you? What if I come to your page and I have no intention of buying from you, but I come to your page regularly and I'm learning so much from you. You're adding so much value that there are things I'm like, wow, okay, so I can wear this under this. I'm learning so much from you on candles, on stress management and all these things because what you're providing is relief with the value that you're creating. And I'm saying all this because we are going into content creation from tomorrow. We're going to spend two hours understanding the content mindset and doing content generation first tomorrow before we come on Monday and get into Instagram. Why do I, I could have just told you people, we're running a marathon one week and we'll have focused only on Instagram. I realized that doing a sprint doesn't work for people that are creating content consistently. If you're doing a sprint, it should be when you already understand your brand, you are creating for a while and you just need that extra ginger to push you out there. But if it's about learning to apply the knowledge that you are getting, then my brand personality is going to be one that takes things slowly and helps you grow gradually. I am not about overnight success. I am about growing slow. So people that are patient enough to walk in that path will come to work with me. I had someone once that was going to be a client, but I saw it from a distance that we were going to clash. And first thing I said is, we are not going to work well together. I know someone you should work with. And he was like, no, I want to work with you. I said, why? He said, You're, you, you, exactly what um, Wilson said. You are very patient. I'm a very impatient person. So I need somebody patient to calm me down. And I was like, impatient people do not calm me down. So, we, so I am calming you down. You are making me hyper. It's just not going to work. So we have to understand what makes you unique? So with what I have said that makes my brand unique, you could say this for your personal brand that you want to build. You could say this for the brand that you have existing, but let's have a conversation. Let's make this conversational. What makes the brand that, you, what kind of brand do you want to create? So we'll see, you could talk about your copywriting brand. Zura, you can talk about your personal brand. Everybody can talk about their personal brand. Or the brand that you're representing. When you think of the brand Timei, what are the things you want people to say about you? What are the unique qualities that will make people come to you to build that relationship with you and take you on that journey? I think I'm, I had a client recently, and when she told me the brand strategies that she had almost worked with before she came to me, I was dazed because I was like, I actually know those people, but I, I learn from them in a way but i can't work with them because we are different completely they are very they are what i call the aggressive brand strategies very 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 aggressive very very aggressive in nature but i knew that's not the way i wanted to look at my brand so if i describe my brand as any company you will know i would describe my brand as dove so now i'm telling you my unique selling proposition why am I telling you all this? I usually don't talk about my brand at all during these trainings. I try my best not to. Why am I telling you all this? I want you to start thinking about how you want your brand to be. If you've thought about how you want your brand to be, then you can start taking steps towards building that brand one piece at a time. Even if your brand is already existing, then start redefining the way your brand is one piece at a time. Do not attempt to build a, 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 a roof first. What most people do is, this is, what I, this is how I see it. Most people, and I made this mistake when I started my first brand, my stationery company. I think I have like, I have so many logos I haven't used. So when I was creating my first brand, I created my logo first. I already knew what it was. And many people already know about Create With Words. Creative World started with the reverse. Logo was done first before I even knew anything about brand personality or anything. So I created my logo. And now I, what I see it as is, 
It's like building a, the roof of the house without the foundation. Why should you build the roof first? The roof is what people see from a distance. People see your logo. When people come to the building, what do they see? The logo at the top of the building. So why will I build the roof of my building before I build the foundation? So what we are doing with branding basics and why we've been going slow is because we are building a deep foundation because when we start running a fast pace from Monday with content creation and Instagram, you would have built the right foundation for your brand. And all you're doing is now painting the building with the content you are creating. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. But let me hear. No one wants to tell me about their brand. Ah, all of you are just hearing about my own brand. All right, I will continue. So my unique selling proposition or unique selling point is this. I take a look at my competition. I look at the difference. I look at the benefits. I look at my consumer. I look at what makes me unique. I look at my sale, my target audience, and my marketing. And I'll go through all these in. And I think I've done through, gone through most of this in a way. All right. So... Why am I looking at my competition? I'm looking at my competition to learn from them. I'm looking at my competition to learn from them. What can I learn from my competition? Um, Comfort, if you've sent the link to her, please call her. She just sent me a message that she hasn't gotten the link. I don't know if you're still listening. So we've talked about the competition throughout today, why we are learning from the competition. So I'm not going to talk about the competition in such in more details. But I look at my difference. What makes me different from my competition? I do not take a brand from you today and start implementing tomorrow. I take time. All the brands I have done crash rock, crash work and said within three days, I've done everything for you. I have never been satisfied with those brands. Okay. Thank you. Please call her. I've never been satisfied with those brands. I have realized that at the end of the day, it just doesn't work for me. I don't like rush work. So my difference is I think different when it comes to branding and I've known what makes me different, which is what some people have said now. So I am drawn to people that are patient like that, like Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn is absolutely amazing where he is very patient when he's teaching or doing website reviews or Instagram page reviews is very, 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 very calm. And another thing that the benefits, what benefits do I bring to you? I give you better results because I look deep down into what you are trying to achieve. I find out the people you should work with and I lead you in that direction. So if I feel that, oh, if you noticed this training, I did not just start with bringing only Instagram experts. I actually brought someone for storytelling because I knew storytelling was going to give you all the difference. I brought someone that talked about automation and chatbots, which brought about a difference. I'm like, everybody still wants to make money. Income generation came in. You must have a vision for your brand. Vision board came in. Then we talked about being authentic and being yourself. Authenticity came in. Today, we talked a little bit about branding again. So, I think about the benefits that I bring to the courses that I am creating. What are the benefits that I will bring to people? What is in it for them? Not what is in it for me. I'm selling the benefits. I'm not selling the products. So I'm asking myself, what will this person gain if they use my products? What will someone gain if they grow their brand with me? I always tell people, if you want to launch tomorrow, I can let you... I, I can push you to in the direction of the person you should work with. And I always say I'm shooting myself in the foot now. However, if you want to launch quickly and you want a short turn turnaround period, I can tell you who to go to. If it comes to PR, everybody knows who I work with for PR in the UK. I'm still looking for someone in Nigeria, but I already know who I will go to for PR if any of my clients want PR. So I understand consumers completely. I understand consumers want to pay money for something. I offer something unique. I understand that I want to cre create a sale, but then I've understood my target audience more. The sale is not necessarily, I want to, I want to sell something. So when I wrote sale there, I do not mean I want to always have sales and 
give discounts. No, I want to create a sale for someone specific, my target audience. So the cost consumer is every single person that consumes something. I understood the consumer market, but I'm like, of all the consumers, who am I paying attention to? And that's my target audience. My target audience. So when I describe my target audience, I would now, since I've described my brand, I see my target audience as people that are value oriented, people that are more passionate about what benefits they can give than what they can gain. People are all, all about productivity and getting things done. They are passionate, they're optimistic. And I always say someone that is just willing to learn. If you are just willing to learn, you don't need to have experience. For most people that work with me, I will say you don't need any experience. I would prefer you without any experience. Come willing to learn. And I am able to transform you into someone that is a bit to be more knowledgeable than the way you met me. So I understand my target audience. Now, marketing. Hmm. That's another topic for another day. How do we market? Maybe I'll bring someone else on board to discuss marketing because I think we're going into Instagram. We'll talk about promotional posts and how we can sell our product. We'll talk about difference between marketing and sales. But we've come to the end of today's. Hmm? Sorry, I thought someone was at my door. <laughs> we've come to the end of today's topic. And I think I said I wanted to finish at. Oh, I don't think we'll be able to do any other brand. I said, in summary, what do I want you to do after you find out all these things that you've done? If you want to make changes for your brand. So someone like Maya, if she has understood that competition, she's doing a competition analysis and she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with all this information that you've gotten. Because fine, it was just a few slides. Some of them add one point or two, but there was valuable information you want. To. So what you want to do, first of all, if you've not done that is identify your target customers. Use market segmentation and create personas to get a picture of the people you are targeting. No need to be precise. A high level hypothesis is enough to start testing and revise as you go. So if you don't know who your target audience is in complete terms, guess, make a guesswork. Because when I said, oh, it's a security company, who needs security? Celebrities need security. So that's a guesswork that you've made. What type of celebrities will pay for security? Celebrities that some of them, especially those that have Twitter fingers, they have to pay for celebrity for security because they've been abusing people on Twitter. The day they go so people are ready to beat them. So those kind of people that are very, very um opinionated will need security. Also, the gentle ones will need security because people can take advantage of them. There are some people security companies that may that may appeal to an introvert like me. Because I always describe myself as an introvert that loves talking. So an introvert like me will, will, will not like a security company that is all about clubbing and or protection and they are all about the biceps. That will not appeal to me because although I want, I, I, I like conversations, I would like my bodyguard to be someone that is a bit private and not someone that is all over social media showing biceps. So that's, if you know that the people that you're trying to appeal to, we like to see those biceps. I want to see, be seen with the tallest, finest guys as a security company, because you've identified your target audience as not just saying it's a celebrity. It's an extroverted celebrity that wants to go to the club, but wants to ensure that as she's looking good, the bodyguard by her side is looking tall, dark and handsome, or light, dark and handsome, or light and handsome and tall. So the bodyguards and the pictures you will show, you will choose and the pictures and everything you would use on your profile will appeal to that person specifically. So just don't just say, oh, I'm a security guard every day. Every day, my security guards wear suits and dark shades. That will appeal to some people. But if it's your target audience are the ones that are a bit extroverted and want to go clubbing and everything, they want to see the body. They want to see quite a lot. Understand your audience then understand their undeserved needs. What needs do they have that are adequately met? And what needs do they have that are not adequately met? So if we look at the security company, for instance, a need they have that is adequately met by most security companies is we keep you safe. We have buff guys that look like they scare the living day life out of anybody that is trying to slap you. Okay, what else? 
a need that they may not have that is not adequately met is confidentiality. Have you never thought about it? How is TMZ always getting the tea on every celebrity? How is TMZ always getting the tea? Sometimes it's the bodyguards or the helps that they hire. So you now say, okay, confidentiality is key to my company. You can now run on that confidentiality stuff. And John, I think that's what you should run on when you are doing your stuff. Confidentiality. Define your, define your value proposition. How will you meet your customer's needs better than your competition? Of all the needs you can address with your product, which one can you focus on? So you are not focusing on all the needs. That's why I said, okay, write three needs. Let's focus on just one for each person. And I, I took confidentiality for John. Why did I take confidentiality? Because security is or it's already given. You must provide security. They must be professional. So don't say we are professionals. So what? Who is not professional? Define professional. An ag bureau is professional. He's professionally an ag bureau. That is it. So professionalism has to be defined in clear terms. Don't just say I'm professional because ag bureau is a profession that requires certain tactics. When you hear an ag bureau's voice, a conductor's voice, you already know what to expect. So they are professional in that way. What do you mean by professional? Bring something else that will make your audience understand you and be drawn to you. So it's beyond saying I'm professional. State your MVP feature set. Bid only what is needed to create enough value for your target audience to validate the direction of your product. Don't build every single thing at once. We're all, most of the people here are startup. Start small, build what is needed at this point in time. Sometimes create a version and do a prototype, test it out on your on your customers. When you test it out, you see people's response. And the way I tested out this course was I did, I've been doing trainings for a while, I think since 2017, but this is the first paid training I'm doing. And I used to do them in a, another Facebook group, my virtual assistant Facebook group. Then we created this group specifically for this training. But well, we had done some test runs earlier on. We did a test run in phases. We did a test run first. Then we created, I say we because I don't work alone. I have an amazing team that works with me. All of you know yourselves, the ones that give me a dick also. We um, tried DIY branding also for a couple of weeks on YouTube before it eventually morphed into this. So don't just go and launch immediately. Do test runs. Because it's, you're, yeah, even if you you say, oh, it doesn't cost me any money, but it costs you time. Look at your time as money. Your time is your most valuable asset you have. It's an asset that you, that you cannot retrieve once it's spent. You either spend your time or invest your time. Decide where you want to invest your time. You can't invest your time in doing everything. I don't do websites for anybody. I can do one for myself if I need to. But I don't do websites for everybody. So I can't run a service that says I build websites. Chima, on the other hand, builds websites and does branding. So you will tell people, I create a brand for you and I create websites for you. I build it from scratch. I create your logo. I create everything because he already has that in place. I don't. So rather than going to start creating that service as a service I offer, I'll be doing myself a disservice and not focusing on what is important by trying to do what every other person is doing. Understanding who you are as a brand is vital. It's the thing that makes or breaks you. You need to understand that you're unique the way you are. Everyone was created the way they are for a reason. I can't change who I am. I'm someone that likes being indoors. I love small conversations. I love dialogues with people on one-on-one -on -one things. I love that personal touch. So I want to ensure that my brand and my brand representatives have that culture that my brand is representing that has made people to be drawn to me. That's my brand culture. And that's the culture of the people that work around me. The brand culture of another brand will be totally different. The brand culture of another advertising firm will be totally different. Well, it's about understanding. And I'm going to go back to this slide. Understanding your customer, understanding your brand, and understanding your competition. And like I said, you don't need to understand all your competition. You can pick one competition. You can say, okay, I will just look at my direct competition so I can focus. I listed the types of competition so you can 
learn from them and know about them and know the distinctions but pick one work on that one for a quarter since you don't have the time say okay this quarter i will get some things from this person rather than trying to get from every single person all the time so this year these are the four brands i'm going to look at and i'm just going to study to learn and make changes as i go you're building brands some people have not built your website here some people have not even created your logo you've not created anything what you're doing is setting the right foundation for your brand and it's important that you remember that your brand is already in you you just need to take the time out to build the brand start small and grow all right thank you everyone for today any questions before i let you know how the brand form will be filled questions 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 if you don't have questions i will ask questions so who knows that direct competition has anybody figured out their direct competition or replacement competition Awesome, Mayan. I'm glad you found it useful. You're welcome. You're welcome. So does everybody know that direct competition, that indirect competition? So when you're filling this form, you'll find it easy to just fill. Remember what I talked about, understanding your customer, understand your brand, understand your, com your competition. So what your brand does well now, then... In this place, what I want you to write is your tips. What changes are you going to make? What your brand does well now? Okay, fantastic. I'll go back to tertiary competition. And I will use your brand as an example. All right. Then we've talked about tertiary competition. This category includes businesses that are tangibly related to yours and really come in handy when you are looking to expand your product catalog. They could be related to products and services that are trending as well as businesses that may be beneficial to partner with further down the line for instance if you sell jewelry okay now let's use your brand so you you are a lingerie company can you tell me the products and please tell me the products that you sell currently so that we can look at who can eventually become a tertiary competition for you i have an idea but i just want to get from you so what we're going to do is we're going to go to tertiary competition page. So for each brand, for each category or for each competition, you have four pages to fill. And I'm just going to go to the tertiary one so that you can see it. You have five pages to fill rather. One place is for your notes. One place is this page. This is simply where you just write the competition name what they offer, their social media presence, what platform they are primarily on. Fantastic. She said you, you, prefer, you provide sleepwear, panties, boxers, and tights. Okay, so if we said the tertiary competition is, um, I'll go through the form and then I will let you know a good example, but I'm thinking about one now. So, Can you hear me? So if you're looking to expand your business, your tertiary competition, it, they, may not do di they may not directly compete with you in any way. They may be potential partners or future competitors if you choose to expand your business. So for example, if you choose to expand your business from just selling sleepwear, panties, boxers, and nightwear, if you want to start doing loungewear, if you want to start doing clothes and dresses and all these other things, they are still selling clothes. But your competition are people that you can, areas that you can expand your business into. So let's look at it this way. For now, you only sell lingerie and sleepwear. We can include loungewear in that. 
do you see yourself going into fashion industry completely in the future? Do you see yourself going into the fashion industry in the future? Because what you've created, what you've stated now are specific things that have to do with outerwear. These are no wears that people get to see. So they are inner wears, they are underwears. Are you looking to do outer wears that people will see in the future? So that's a question you will have to answer before we continue. Fantastic. So that's your tertiary competition because it's something that you can do in the future. It's not something you're doing now. Why do you want to know that? You want to know that because you're looking at, oh, what are the potentials of me um, changing what I am doing in the future? What is the opportunity for growth? So if you're looking at tertiary competition, you can also look at fashion competitions that started like yours that have now become fashion brands, that are now known fashion brands. So did I answer your question or do you want me to go for that? Do you want us to fill this out for you? Oh, we've got five more minutes. So guys, what you should do is, like I said, on this page, on the very first page, I'll go to the first page first before I come back to page 14. On the very first page, list, no, it's not the first page, sorry. Yeah, it's, a, it's the second page. On the second page, list like, don't list just one, list like five of each. And it's not something you have to finish immediately. I think if you get one, fine. But list a, list a few, then you will now eliminate some and then pick one to work with. So if you list them, you can create a spreadsheet. If people want, I can create a spreadsheet with all the details so that you just fill the spreadsheet when you are ready. If you want me to create a spreadsheet for this analysis where you can have all the brands that you've listed, that can be done with ease. But list them pick one remember what i said about eliminating you eliminate by looking at their website and some other details just to say okay this one i won't look at this now this doesn't have this online presence i want one that has a strong online presence and then when you're on their website what are the things that you're looking for you have to think about all that when you are creating a Priya, you said yes ma do you understand or do you want me to explain more So you, first of all, list the name of the competition. You state exactly what they offer. Observe their social media presence. Yeah, you're not writing so much details. What platforms are they on? Do they have a functioning website? What's their unique selling point and your notes? That's the first part. You then write why we lose when it comes to this competition, why we win when it comes to this competition. Their products pricing and discount and, and if you coming for a church november 11th okay fantastic november 11th we have a session where we'll focus on something similar to this if you're representing a church i'll send you the email with all the details so you don't need to worry but if you can use this for your brand that would be great we said okay what are the landmines remember we said a landmine is used to fully expose a competitor's weakness so that a prospect has to make a decision between a deficient product aka your competitors and a more complete product sometimes you might not find landmines sometimes you can find landmines like i said a landmine for that salon i talked about is their customer service it's a big customer it's a big big problem I know in um, Africa and most of us traditionally, we will not compete in a way that does attack ads that will say Ariel is better than Omo because Omo stains your clothes, kind of something like that. If you know Omo leaves a left behind stain, we don't leave stains on your clothes or something like that. That's a landmine that you found. How do you use that landmine? Look at the objections. 
to what you are what could make people object to using your service and then answer these objections we have a, other documents that talk some more details when you get to their website this is what i want you to do i want you to look at the type of content that they have whether they have a blog they have a newsletter look at the type of content that they have how often do they post on their website do they have a podcast do they just have only services what are the type of things they have on their website what are their lead magnets? Emma talked about lead magnets. Lead magnets are freebies or things that they can use to build their mailing list. So for pre one lead magnet with you can be how to measure your bra yourself at home. It could have a bra measurement chart. That's a lead magnet. When people download that from you, they get your email. You get their email address in return. So what are the freebies you can create? What are the free resource, resources or infographics you can create that will make people give you their email address for something? So find out if they use lead magnets. That's why I said you're looking at international, not just global, local. The keywords and SEOs, if you can find this, if you use, um, there's some web, there's, there's this plugin you can use on your um, page. On, on, on Google Chrome that lets you, I can't remember the plugin. Chima, if you are here and you know the plugin I'm talking about, please let us know. But it lets you know the keywords that were used. So it helps your search engine optimization. I don't know if Emma or um, George talked about this. Then most websites don't have services. If it's a service-based business, are there services on their website? If it's a business that has products, are there products prices on their website? Do they have a sale option? Do they have an outlet option? Write all what you can find on their websites on this page. Then you go to their social media page. You look at the following things. Look at their presence on social media. What platforms are they on? How often do they post? What types of posts are they putting? What hashtags do they use regularly? Do they have a lead magnet in their bio that they are using to draw attention? The lead magnets may be the same lead magnets on the website, but let's see how often they write about it on their website. Then this place is just for your notes. Whatever observations you make about the brand, write it down. So the clause is this. If you do this and send to me, I will give you a feedback. So to download the documents because a couple of people have mentioned they don't know where to get the documents for now i've put it under units so if you go under units it's yeah competition analysis this is the document you need to download it and fill but if you click on download on it here it comes up here you just download it and fill it and i will get back to you once you send it to me once you're done with it, click on done. So you know you are done with that unit. However, by the end of this call, it's going to go under assignments, unit 10. Unit 10 has all the assignments we have done so far. All the workbooks you need are all in unit 10. I've labeled it assignments because a couple of people have said that they are struggling to find videos and details that we are working on so that they do not miss any aspect for now it's unit 10 i'm not going to delete i would delete unit 9 then it becomes unit 9 but it's the unit with assignments because i have assignments appearing twice for now it's under unit 10 but it's your man i will delete this 9 then it becomes 9 but just know that it's the assignment with all the assignment has all the links for every single assignment you need to do and you can send that to me and i will fill and get back to you so what you do when you get the download is if you, um, okay, I can't, I'm going to send the, send it through chat now so people can download the PDF version of it. If you that, look at this link also, sorry, I'm going to put a link there in the comments of the assignment. That's a PDF online link. If you fill that link with that link, you will get to create a PDF file that you can send to me 
when you feel it and we can discuss your feedback like i said i'll be giving you feedback you have between now and march to redeem that um unfortunately november is fully booked so you will have to book in december you you have to book in for december but the calendar will be out soon so i've put a link there so just pick that link and um get it now all right any questions comments or anything does, does everybody understand clearly what we've done so far Any questions? All right, so I'm putting this under um, assignments now so you can all have access to it before we send the emails, just in case you want to fill it. But once you feel sent to me, I have sent a couple of people back there, so they've gotten my feedback on the other things that they have filled. And if you send yours to me, I will definitely give you my feedback. But it's not compulsory. It's only for those that want feedback. It's not compulsory. But I think it's recommended to get the feedback, and it's not an offer that is going to last forever. Like I said, it's a limited time offer. It goes over off in January because I'm fully booked for almost almost fully booked for December. It goes off in March. So you have that period. Don't say, oh, I want to launch the brand by January 1st. There's nothing fantastic about January 1st. Start now. Start working on it gradually. And definitely, 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 you will see the results yourself. You will see the results. All right, everyone. I think it's we've done well for today. So thank you all for joining me today. God bless you. And hopefully we will catch up tomorrow. Tomorrow is on content generation. So let's get ready to start creating content. And, um, oh, sorry. I didn't have the comments on the screen today. I apologize. I just came on the screen and I noticed. All right, then. Thank you all for joining me today. Well, two hours, seven minutes. I'm seven minutes gone beyond time. Thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. for those in Nigeria. And for those in the UK, we will see you at 6 p.m. Have a lovely day. Bye. You're welcome, Richard. Richard, we need to catch up. But that's true. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've been busy. I will call you tomorrow, hopefully. Or Sunday, most likely.